Hello, good morning. And this is another Trentin lecture with the continuation of the third lecture. And in this lecture, I will be discussing the death certification. Previously, uh, just uh, a brief history that previously, before the invention of the stethoscope, the certification of death was a problem. And then various techniques and methods, they were imposed and practiced, but with the help of thing or with the help of the uh, invention of the stethoscope, we sorted out all the uh, pra practices which were going on previously. When death certification was uh, decided by the WHO and they set a criteria. So we we'll learn in this lecture, the certification of death as per guideline of WHO, World Health Organization, and they set up a criteria and they devised an international format of death certification. And we prepared the death certificate according to the format given by the WHO. Routine practice, uh, which is a wrong one in wards and emergencies, the doctors inadvertently write the cardiopulmonary failure as a cause of death. Whereas it's a mode, this is not the cause and cause is always the injury or the disease which led to failure of the vital system and the cause of death. So I will be discussing the format and how we should write the cause in the columns as per direction of the WHO. Thank you very much, take care. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. As we are studying thanatology, and this is the continuation of the third lecture. And in this lecture, I'll be discussing the death certification. A little a bit about the history of death certification, because this is an interesting history. Before 1816, the physicians were not well trusted in their ability to, to diagnose death. And there was a great fear of being buried alive. Then in ancient Rome, a call out phenomena, that is the, they called out disease person name three times. If no response, finger was amputated, and if no bleeding, then the death was declared. Then became the Claude Forcep. By the French physicians, they designed a clamp around the nipple of the presumed corpse to, be, to confirm death. And if no response, he was declared dead. Then, there was a fear of being buried alive. In 14th century, Duke of Lancaster left instructions to keep his body in bed for 40 days. If the doctor still believed he was dead, then he be buried. Then the magic word in 1790, these magic words, they were written on a mirror with invisible ink, invisible ink, which was usually silver nitrate. And the decomposed body produced hydrogen sulfide and this hydrogen sulfide used to combine with silver nitrate and the writing became visible as silver sulfide. And this was the magic word, I am dead now. Then patent coffin alert in 1897, a coffin was designed. If the death was misdiagnosed and it was presumed that if diseased awoke from sleep beneath the ground, a device was rigged to light a lantern, raise a flag and ring a bell. So this was a patent coffin which used to be used. Then the invention of the stethoscope, it resolved the issues. 
And in 1816, the stethoscope was invented and the, then the physician were began to be trusted in their ability to diagnose death. The change became in 20th century when in 1952, with an outbreak of polio in Copenhagen, 12 years old girl underwent trichosmy and put on ventilator. Then cardiorespiratory criteria was established at that time to declare death. Similarly, Pierre Mallard in French in 1957 reported on patient who had developed brain injury and were on mechanical ventilator for infinitive time. The brainstem reflexes were not present and the post-mortem examination revealed that their brain had liquefaction. In 1968, then Harvard Brain Death Committee published a report on how to diagnose death on new criteria. And criteria proposed that the patient could have no brainstem or spinal cord reflexes to declare death. There is no spontaneous respiration. Similarly, there is no spontaneous cardiac activity. A confirmatory test was also required that is for cardiac activity ECG. Now talking about the death certificate. The certificate of death which includes determination or diagnosis of death is the job of a doctor. And death certificate is a legal document has got a lot of importance and should be prepared carefully. It's a normal routine in our hospitals that in the column of cause of death, it is written as cardiopulmonary arrest, which is a mode and it is not a cause of death. Now the international format of medical certificate of cause of death or WHO criteria of medical certification of cause of death. Filling of the death certificate performed is such that a complete biodata is entered and there are two sections which are headed as section one and section two. In section one, one A, that is the immediate or the direct cause is written and one B, any morbid condition if giving rise to the immediate cause is written and one C, any antecedent or underlying condition which contributed to the cause of death. And in section two, any other significant condition which can contribute to the cause of death is written. The section one, like disease condition, one A, one B and one C, this is how it is written. This is the section two, any other condition. So this is the performer. The cause of death does not mean the mode of life. It means the disease, injury, or complication which caused death. Now, a few examples. If the patient had acute peritonitis due to perforation of duodenal ulcer, it will be written as 1A peritonitis for the last two days, 1B perforation of duodenum for the last four days, and 1C, duodenal ulcer for the last six months. So that will indicate that the patient was suffering from duodenal ulcer for the last six months. For the last four days, he had perforation of the duodenum from that side and which led to the per peritonitis for the last two days. And there would not be written in this section two. All that is required is that precise cause of death should be set out starting from the immediate cause and working back to the underlying disease which is responsible. Terms which merely describes mode of dying like heart failure, coma should be avoided. If precise cause of death is not known, 
one should not start guessing it. Now another example, a child dying of toxemia in an attack of diphtheria, it is sufficient to certify as yes, follows, 1A toxemia for the last two days and 1B diphtheria for the last four days. Now, another case, child was suffering from measles, died of pneumonia, that is complication of measles. In 1A, it is pneumonia for the last six days and 1B measles for the last three weeks. Another example, the elderly man dying of hypostatic pneumonia after being bedridden owing to the fracture of neck of femur caused by fall from the ladder and it will be written as number one, A, hypostatic pneumonia for the last one day, fracture of neck of femur for the last seven days and the fall from the ladder for the last seven days. So the example with the underlying cause, for example, a diabetic patient who had been under insulin control for many years suddenly dies from degenerative heart condition. Depending upon the fatal outcome of one or the other condition or both, the following entries are possible. Number one, assuming that heart condition resulted from the long-standing diabetes, the sequence would be in 1A myocardial infarction, and 1B diabetes. That means the myocardial infarction that resulted from diabetes. If he writes 1A diabetes and 1B myocardial infarction, which is a reverse order, which means that the diabetes resulted from myocardial infarction, this is impossible sequence. So it should not be written like that, that it misinterprets. So under no circumstances, a doctor should sign a blank or partly, partly blank death certificate because sometimes it may happen that the doctor is too much exhausted from long duty hours and the person is serious and he may sign up that I'm going to sleep, please fill the performa. Never ever do like that. Under no circumstances, a doctor should write or sign a blank or a partly blank death certificate. Thank you very much. This is all about the lecture number three. Take care and Allah Hafiz. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and my channel. Thank you very much.